How's it going guys? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Schnoike and today I'm going to show you how to make a super realistic and fully customizable atmosphere uh, in Blender in just a few minutes and it takes uh, only a few clicks to do. Uh, it's quite easy. Um, and this add-on is called Physical Starlight and Atmosphere and after using it for a few days I can confidently say this is one heck of an add-on. This is pretty incredible stuff. Uh, the amount of uh, atmosphere generation you're able to do with a few clicks is amazing. So I'll show you how to get it set up in this video. The first thing you're going to want to do is go to blendermarket.com. Once you're here and you've created an account, go to the search bar and type in physical starlight and atmosphere. And this is the one you're looking for. On this page, you can read a little bit more about the program and see some renders that are possible with it. Now you're going to click on this button and download the add-on. All right, so I've downloaded the add-on and I've opened a new Blender tab. Delete the default cube. We don't need that thing. What you want to do is go to Edit, Preferences, Add-ons, and Install. Once you've found your zipped file, click on that and click install add-on. Now you can go back to the add-ons tab and search up atmosphere and check this box, lighting, physical starlight and atmosphere. All right, so I've added this little city scene to test uh, the atmosphere. So now, once you've got that box selected in add-ons, you're gonna go to this side panel here and go down to atmosphere and click this button to enable the physical atmosphere. And already, you've got this just beautiful sky with with clouds you've got a sun there um so it's it's literally one click and you've got a uh environment that looks really good already but obviously you're going to want more than the default atmosphere setting so i'm going to click this little arrow next to physical atmosphere and as you can see there's this whole set of sliders um to change the parameters of the atmosphere now it may look a little daunting at first but each of these are fairly simple. It's easy to learn each one, so I'm gonna go through each slider and quickly tell you what it does. First, the azimuth slider uh, is going to change where your sun is located horizontally. So you can move it to the left, to the right, you can move it around. Um, and that just helps for when you want to light something very specifically. Uh, in, in a certain way you can change where the sun is. The elevation slider changes where the sun is positioned vertically. So now I'm going to turn it down and it goes up. And as you can see, when it goes up, it kind of goes from dusk to noontime and it gets brighter uh, like a real sun would. Um, and as you increase it, it goes down. And as you can see when I'm moving it, it automatically changes the sun's color uh, depending on the time of day, which is just really cool. So now we get to the fun part. So you see this slider angular diameter, you can just crank that baby up and now you've just got this massive sun. Uh, and this is really cool for it, like retro renders and stuff when you just want this big stylized sun. Uh, that is the perfect slider for it. Temperature K changes the uh, temperature of the sunlight. So bringing it down will make it more warm and bringing it up will make it colder. Intensity changes the brightness of the sun lamp. So if you turn it all the way down, uh, it barely casts any light. When you turn it all the way up, uh, it looks more like a sun. If you check this binary sun, you now have two suns like Tatooine, which is awesome. And you can change the distance uh, of the binary sun, you can change the phase, so it kind of rotates around that other sun. Angular diameter, also temperature, you can increase, decrease. Um, the main light is still coming from the primary sun. The secondary sun is just um, not casting as much light. And same thing with intensity. It slightly changes the light, but really the intensity uh, will be much more changed when you change the primary sun. So now we get into the atmospheric controls. If you turn up the density here, uh, you can make it look like there's some smoke uh, or something like that. Uh, and it's really, really cool just for, for a dusk look or um, just, just making the sky look different than it would usually. And if you turn it all the way down, um, it kind of uh, doesn't look as great. Uh, because it's just um, 
black and white. There's absolutely, there's zero density in the atmosphere. Um, but if you turn it just a little bit up, uh, that will fix that problem. Scale height will change the height at which the atmosphere is sitting. Um, so you can bring it either really high or really low, um, whatever works for you. You can also increase the intensity of the atmosphere and this will um, increase it to a much greater degree than increasing the sun does. So you can just make it absolutely um, bright as anything or you can make it completely dark. So for night intensity, I'm actually going to um, bring the sun down a bit and increase that night intensity value and you can see that it ever so slightly uh, Increases the brightness of the night sky So these color sliders are where you can change the color of the atmosphere So if I change it to red, it's kind of this orangey dusk color uh, Or if I change it to green, it's kind of this alien world atmosphere um, or some shade of purple and you can start to see how that could be made into a retro render. In scattering affects the atmosphere color to a much uh, greater degree. So if you bring this all the way up, it already starts to um, increase the brightness and if you move it to red, uh, it's just totally red and you can you can make this extremely stylized with this slider depending on what you want. Absorption will also change uh, the color that you're looking at. Um, so if I go to green, it kind of makes everything green, uh, yellow, red, etc. Uh, and this kind of makes everything uniformly the same color. Under MIE scattering, you can play around with the intensity. Um, this, this intensity bar works like the other one, except you can kind of see the clouds. Anisotropy also changes the bloom on the sun. Now we get to the stars, so I'm going to bring my sun down again. Um, till it's nighttime, and I'm going to turn up this radiance intensity on the stars. And as you can see, there are now stars in the night sky. That's pretty cool. Radiance gamma can absolutely blow out the sky um, with multiple clusters of stars. Um, it looks like the sky's on fire, uh, but as you increase that value, um, it gets to a more realistic looking uh, star field. And if you've got your night sky radiance intensity set to a high enough level, uh, you can actually see it during the day, which is a pretty cool effect. Uh, I'm going to turn it down for now, um, just so that those stars stay in the nighttime. Now we get to the cloud settings. Uh, so if you turn up the scale on this, uh, it decreases the scale of the cloud. Sometimes the um, sliders go in the opposite direction that one would think, but as you turn it up, uh, it makes it smaller, and if you turn it down, it makes it bigger, and in my opinion, bigger looks a lot more realistic than smaller in a lot of cases. You can also change the thickness of the clouds, so you can make them super wispy and light, and it's super cool looking, um, or you can make them super uh, dark and imposing, which also looks extremely nice. You can also change the minimum and maximum values of the clouds uh, to assume whatever shape you want. Turning up the lighting intensity bar uh, creates this really cool light reflection here from the sun. Uh, and as you can see, it just looks so, so nice, especially when it's super close to the sun. It, it just bounces off in a really cool and realistic way. You can also turn up self-shadowing. Uh, and you can play around with that. It basically adds more weight to the clouds, uh, or you can make it super light in some places and super dark in other places, playing around with these two dials. Turning up directional power will also add more intensity to those reflections. You don't want to overdo it necessarily, but if you want some stylized reflective clouds, that looks pretty cool. You can also change the in-scattering value, so you can make uh, red clouds, or you can make pink clouds, or you can make blue clouds or green clouds, uh, whatever color of clouds you'd like to make. <laughs> you can also change the location of these clouds so you can put them wherever you want uh, over your scene. And you can also change the rotation and the best one for this is the Z slider. That will rotate the clouds in the Z direction and rotate them around. You can also use X and Y, um, but sometimes it's a little bit janky. But I mean, if you can figure out something that works with that, 
uh, go for it. So I unfortunately wasn't able to get the object fog parameters working on this project, uh, but if you check out the demo video, you can see that it really does work, uh, and when you get it to work, it looks extremely cool. Uh, and this demo video also has a cooler environment uh, than the one I put together, uh, so if you really want to see what this add-on can do, definitely check out the demo video. I'll put a link to it in the description. Down here at the ground settings, I'm actually going to hide the plane for a second, uh, and you can change the ground uh, under the sky to whatever color you'd like. You can also disable the ground completely uh, so that it blends nicely with the rest of the atmosphere. And you can also change the offset of the ground so that it slightly moves that. And if you want to change the horizon offset, uh, you can increase that and it brings the ground down or you can bring it up and it brings the horizon up as well. Um, so you can change where that line is. Finally, you've got the artistic controls, the distance scaler, the fall off, and the sun radiance gamma. Uh, and you can move those around um, to whatever fits your project. Uh, the fall off, if you do it enough, looks, looks very cool. Um, you can kinda make the sky a little bit more expansive. Um, and brighter and it just looks very cool overall. So that's kind of a basic rundown on all of the sliders involved with this add-on and as you can see it's extremely versatile uh, and I'm actually going to make a few scenes for you guys to see just how cool uh, and customizable this atmosphere is if you change all the right sliders. So here we've got the retro purple big sun scene that looks really cool. How about a nice red apocalyptic double sun scene? Uh-huh, uh-huh, I like it. And finally, here's a nice calming blue sun scene. So yeah, I mean, there's just endless possibilities for this add-on. So anyways, this is Physical Starlight and Atmosphere. It's an absolutely amazing add-on and it saves a lot of time as far as creating a sky goes. And once you've used it for a little bit of time, you'll be able to um, do much more creative and outside the box uh, applications of this add-on. So I'm excited to see what you guys come up with. And if you want to support both me and the amazing people who have worked on this add-on, please consider using the affiliate link in the description to download it for yourself. And yeah, that's all from me. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope that you find some really cool applications for this add-on. Have a great day and I'll see you guys later. Take care.